Okay. That work ethic. Well, yeah, man, life good. The, the kid, you know, the kid good. The wife good. So the kid good, the wife good, and you know my mind is in a good place. Life good. There we go. Always gonna hear that shit. Always gonna hear that, bro. How you be though, man? How was your day? Shit was good. I wanted to work. I got off. Everybody waiting for me to eat though. So got in my grandma's house. Got all the plates. Got got the grub over there. They made the two plates over there, Joe. So. Went back over there, got some leftovers today. So I'm gonna eat that shit late on the night when we finish this. I'm gonna go some mash that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, everybody good. Uh, it's a pretty all right day on Thanksgiving at work. Ain't nobody had to get no shots. So, well, yeah, somebody had to get a shot, but she ain't resist. She just went along with it. So, pretty okay day. Gotcha. Pretty okay day. Man, pretty okay days at work. I don't, I don't really have no bad days at work at all. It's gonna take somebody that work with me to piss me off for me to have a bad day at work. I love. I don't see the day we have. And you ain't gotta work in no like old isolated ass job where you just by yourself all day. We get to actually yeah, around people. It's something different every day, all day. It's something different. If you know, two days are the same. You feel me? So. Shit, no six hours of the same. <laughs> Shit, I love it. So always new motherfuckers coming in and going out. You make it the same motherfucker for six, seven days, but then, boom. And to have my job schedule falls, I only work the weekends most times. So by the time I go back to work, maybe a whole new set of motherfuckers in there with the same one or two people in there. So you feel me? You got those, and then you got your new customers. <laughs> yeah, you feel me. Motherfuckers are rotating though. Uh, about to get cold. Some of the old motherfuckers are gonna come back in. So. I got you. They gonna claim they suicidal for a couple weeks. Get some food in their system. Refuse to take medication. Get warm. Get some free clothes and go on back outside. <laughs> go on back outside. You said that shit like they kid coming in uh, from playing. Uh, like nah, they came outside, go play football. Go I, I we got this one old nigga. He's 67 years old. Mm-hmm. Or 76, yeah. something like that. I think he's 76. He no, nah, they, they let him go. Okay. They, let, they let him go. They let him go. So, got this one nigga. He just... Always likes to use the bathroom on itself. You feel me? So it becomes irritating. But I don't have to clean the shit up. So I and they really don't bother me. <laughs> there you go. But that's pretty good. That is pretty fucking good. But you know. I ain't got to clean that shit up. Uh, it's all about building rapport with people and how you talk to people. Like, on the walk by me, he screamed, fuck out. And he looked at me. I just looked at him like that was supposed to affect me or something. <laughs> yeah, wrong with that. Who knows? I just look at him. It be affecting some people. They want to go tell him. They scream, that shit don't affect me. Go ahead and get out the system. I'm like, people don't know. Tell my wife that last night. Like, people don't know. My brother just ran through screams all the goddamn time. So, that I do. That I do. Like, people doing that shit here does not affect me. I grew up with this shit. <laughs> you are absolutely right. People who have ever lived with me can definitely attest that they are, they are pretty much proofed and, and uh, w- they will never have to worry about like random loud yells like Throwing them off or uncomfortable because uh, they won't let enough of them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. That's I'm it. Glad I, I, f- I feel like I helped you like in your training for your job. Yeah, that's like that's another cool. fact, man. Uh, like people be screaming, the nurses be running out there. What was that? I'm like, oh, they ain't that scream. They are. <laughs> 
Kayla, you so laid back. I, I've dealt with most of everything that goes on here at some point in my life <laughs> with regular people. So, or a different circumstance, but same activity. Mm -hmm. A yell here, a yell there. Well, you know, a yell is the same everywhere. Man, so good. I love being in this field, oh, man. I love it. I love it. It's the best field. There's the many fields I've worked in for the past 20 odd some years. I think mm -hmm. I should have just been in this one from the jump, but it wasn't meant to do it because everything I've done before now has prepared me for that, what I do now. So, Exactly. You got yeah, here when you were here. Before this, you were supposed to be there, which is exactly. why you were there. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you got here without it. You, know, you got to just go with life sometimes. And you know what else? You can't fail there without here. Mm hmm but you always here, which is why you have to have here first in order to get there. Right. You can have here without the T, but you can't have there without the here. Ooh, Jesus. Wow. That boy talking. And I said a whole word salad, but I don't really, I, I lost myself somewhere in there. That's how you know you're talking right now, when you lose yourself. You got to lose it. yourself. In the bowl, but you go on it, you go on it, you ever gotta let it go. Oh, with the Cadillac, <laughs> can I say something? Sure, that that little moment. I, I don't really care for that song that much. Like, I know it was a hit and everything, but that look, you know, it, you know, it, you know, it. I don't really care for it like that. I guess I, right, but I don't, I don't know. it'd be kind of annoying. <laughs> it wasn't my, wasn't my cup of tea. But I I want to let it go. I want to let it go. I want to let it go. I'm I'm good on letting it go. It's a lot of songs I listen to people don't like, so I I don't judge people for what they listen to or what the public deems is popular. What's popular to me may not be popular to most, but hey, it is what it is. I can dig that. Along with their own shit on my taste, I won't shit on theirs. I'm gonna tell you something that ain't popular. So I show so you know we do our docket and all that stuff every week and da da da. So I had mm -hmm. two on the docket. Um and then you know sometimes God send you like a little message. <laughs> so like right before, like maybe I don't know, maybe half an hour before we was, you know, about to link up to record this. I damn get like a little signpost from God, like, don't, don't, don't talk about that. Don't even what that don't talk about. And both topics were kind of like linked to each other. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what to talk about now. <laughs> um Oh, yeah, well, yeah. One, thing, one thing I do want to touch base on That's is the continuous weird. process. Okay. Continuous process. And I'm searching for justice for that um the the girl, I can't pronounce her name, last name Robinson. Shaquilla. Yeah, her. And yeah, I, I heard that um in the news recently they've um uh, uh, what is it put out a arrest warrant a arrest warrant. One of them people that was down there with her. I don't think they disclosed the name yet, but I know the authorities from where it happened that got to arrest one out for one of them. So, them two people that was in the video that was taping and hitting up? Mm, probably so, most likely. Yeah, they need an arrest woman. They need to be arrested. Mm -hmm. Some ain't like, they know Whether they did it or did not do it, they know something. Something I know like, at least one charge they get is going. To, I know at least one charge they're gonna have is obstruction of justice because they lied and said she was uh, had drunk too much and was feeling like that. Nah, she got thoroughly Dang. beat up. Yeah, that just looked like a uh, repeated hit to the head and a woman who had just given up, kind of like you know how you lose your fight and she just lost her fight. Yeah. 
she looked like she had just relegated herself. All right, this lady gonna beat me to death. God damn it. I don't know what else to do. Oh, I, I, I really don't. I will say this. People need to pick their damn friends better because I, yeah, I don't. Well, well, I will say this. I think you people use the word friend so loosely now. I'm going to say maybe categorize your friends like as in like your you nah, got your good you got, you got your ride or dies, your good friends, your fams, your bros, your sisters, whatever you call them, like your, your tightest friends that like you know for a fact. Y'all have been through so much shit together. You know they are tried and true and y'all gonna ride. Like everything will be good and you ain't gotta worry about no crazy shit happening. Y'all good. Then you got your, you know, maybe your work friends that you're cool with, but you don't go nowhere with them. like you don't they don't get nowhere into your intimate spaces where they could use nothing against you or get mad at you over something or staple or something and be read, you know, like you, you keep them at arms this and you you talk to them about work shit. And work related social shit, but nothing outside of like nothing in your personal life. Then you got maybe your your friends that you like, you know, you know on social media, like you cool with them, y'all done got a connection or some type of common ground, but y'all don't know each other personally. You know what I'm saying? Like there's nothing, there's no or it's just we see each other online, we pull up, we cool, we do all our online stuff, but we don't talk outside of that we we don't interact we don't do, ain't nobody calling each other ain't nobody going back and forth and i think you got to categorize your friends like that so that you can keep that shit from because like she should have never been down there with them people ain't no way in the world somebody your friend fight you like that and then your other friend record it like if y'all all friends Oh boy would have been in the middle, like, yo, man, y'all stop, y'all tripping before it even got to that point. Like, yo, y'all, yo, one of y'all go go cool off, go smoke a joint, go hit a cigarette, go walk, go work out, go do something else. But like you don't sit there and record it and then tell her, get up if I back. Like, what? Nick, get over there and help her. Break it up. Assistance, some medical assistance. If it's at she the damn point, probably the point that you gotta tell her to fight back, is at the point where you need to break it up. My uh, yo, something is wrong. Like if, even if you did want, if you were gonna let her make the one if you did want to, okay, they want to carry get cash through for eight. Okay, cool. At that point where you see she not fighting back and she can't fight. Instead of saying, okay, now, well, girl, now if I no, okay, let me step in, man or female. It's just y'all three in the room. Step in. Right. If, if if that is a friend, that ain't no friend. That's a motherfucker who was using another motherfucker on vacation. That's motherfuckers who got a group deal on vacation. Like, oh, shit, I want to go anyway. I'm going to ride. I'm going to go. That, that one ain't friend. That's I've never had a friend. I've never had a friend that would do that to me or I would do that to. We might get into a fight, but I'm not going to go to the point where I want to I want to physically harm you and see you right. hurt. It, it, it's a yeah. difference between fighting. My friends, mm -mm. I've never actually physically fought any friends in my lifetime. I fought associates. I fought people that were just cool, you know, like we knew each other. We had some quick look. We was on the same team or we was at the same camp or something like that. But I ain't never fought like a real friend. Because it's, it's like I could be hurt by a friend, but like a real friend ain't going to really do nothing that's going to make me dislike them to the point where I want to fight them. Because for me to want to fight somebody, I got to either not know you and not care about you or not like you. For me, because I, I, I get into a different, I, I go into a rageful state. So, like, I don't think I ever been had a friend that then, like, did something to me even to, to have that be a thing. You know what I mean? Like, I've had some real bad arguments. I've had my aunt accuse me of fighting a friend with rocks. But... <laughs> It's never actually happened in reality or anything. You know what I mean? Like I've gotten in trouble for a fight with a friend that didn't actually happen. But yeah, like I don't know what the hell. Like 
I, I, I feel like it's really just choosing the right people, man. Like, God bless her young sister, but I really don't think she should have been there with those people. There couldn't have been people that you call them loved ones or, like, they fuck with you like that. Like, I'm sorry. Oh, it, it couldn't have been people way of being friends where it's just whatever like the wild west you know like we be cool but if i don't like you then fuck you all of a sudden like i don't know what the new rules are but i ain't never seen no friends act like that like i said no friends fought me or i fought them or like we again i've argued we've had disagreements all of that but in every situation come to Physical harm, you know. We joked it off. We both walked it away. Walked away. I walked away. They walked away. Somebody like just was like, "Yeah, we friends. It ain't that deep. We don't need to go no past this." Like, so I feel like it. It, you, it ain't no way in the world that girl was a friend. You don't beat nobody like that. They set that shit up. I really feel now. If if they didn't have nothing to do with the murder, I I can't say that the young lady. That, I'll leave that to the coroners and the investigation. But I will say. That fight was set up like they somebody knew that was about to happen. Cause y'all recording, and the person like did. Pretty, yeah, it looked like pretty dedicated because y'all got the phone now. And you ain't about to tell me this was no damn friend fight club neither. This one no 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 nigga. This something we do all time now. You know, black people don't even do all that, man. Like we a slap box. Slap box. And that even that, that, even that, that I don't got really got down with that because you hit me in the face. I'm gonna smack the shit out of you for real. I got you. Like, no. like, don't touch my face. So. Yeah, you hit me in the face. Man, we we fighting for real now. That like, we ain't no more slap slap. It's punch punch. Like I'm coming with some hook. I'm kicking. We trying your to ass. drop. I'm fucking your ass. Yeah. Fuck my. My, look, I ain't been hit in the face without it being a physical altercation that, you know, it deemed the, warranted that the other person should be trying to swing back. Since I was a small child when my mama used to pop me and my granny used to pop me. Once pops ended for me, don't touch my motherfucking face. I don't even really like to touch my face outside of washing it and putting some lotion on. Like, leave my fucking face alone. <laughs> like, let that shit just ride. Like, whatever it is, let it be. <laughs> if the man, hell, you know, you can come in there and get the, get the beard or tr- trim the mustache, all that shit, but don't well, touch I used to hate face. that. Like, I, I even hate that. I ball, but, like, don't grab my face, though, like, you know, Chief, you know. Just, yeah, just... Just maybe you know at the back of my head, like, like, my wife do so let me don't grab my face. Yeah, or, or, or say you know, look at me. You know, just tell me look at you real quick. So tell me turn my face to the left or right or look up or look down, but don't don't grab my shit. Don't go touch my motherfucking face. Hold up to at the end of the day, Shanquella should not have been there with them people. They were not uh, her. They could not have been friends. And whoever got the warrant out for them, I hope they get arrested and I hope justice is brought for that young lady. Whoever, who, whatever the cause is. But for that assault, somebody need to come, come to justice for that. I saw the assault. I don't know how she died, but I saw the assault. Yes, Lord. Maybe it's the old man in me. But all that shit ain't necessary, man. All that shit ain't necessary. And I know at some point in time in my life, I was about the violence and okay, we could fight, okay, okay set it off and all that. I, I, I know that. But I'm a, at a point where you got to be wiser than that. And I just want to share that wisdom with others that you don't have to go through that phase if you know better. And there's many, many people such as myself trying to tell you better just be receptive to this information and put it into play if you may find yourselves in these situations that may warrant violence. You don't have to be violent. If you're at a point where you know you have no more words for the situation, 
you don't have to get violent. You can just get gone. You can leave the situation. I mean that. Just remember you, this. As a person who's met many, many people in his life, many people get into situations because of what others around them are going to say after that situation. Because you're trying to save face or save a name. The name you may have with these same people in this year, three years from now, won't even make any make any difference or be it a be it a memory. Life is so much more than these these minute seconds that you're choosing life or death over. Please value your life. Should just value life altogether. You may hate a motherfucker in a, in a moment, but take a few more moments to think about if that situation really warrants taking a man's life and then ruining your life. Because someone's going to say something. It's cameras everywhere. You're going to be on the run forever, or you're going to jail. Someone's going to get retribution and kill you too. It's it just can just break the damn cycle. And nine times out of the ten, it's. The same race killing the same race. That's a fact. You kill the people. You, you hurt the people that's closest to you. If you remember, like just as fast as the population on Earth is growing, it's decreasing at the same rate. Yeah, it, it's it's changing. the The demographic is changing based on where the violence is lower at. So you're getting more people, I think, that is like in areas where like, oh, I don't have to worry about my people shooting me today. It's a little more chill out here. It's, 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 fucking, it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. You feel like I feel like I, the, some of the thoughts and worries I have as a parent, I should not have to have. Fact. Living, living in a first world country. I don't live in a third world country. So I shouldn't have to think about all the weird shit that I had to think about that the possibilities of my family may have to go through. So I have to be on extra guard for as the protector and provider of the family. You feel me? Like just a trip you know, out into the store, it just brings anxiety on. Like, all right, I got to make sure I keep my kids close to me because there's motherfuckers out here like snatch kids and the sex trafficking. So I got to make sure if my wife go down the aisle, I got to make sure I know where she at. Make sure I got all eyes on him, but motherfuckers out here in Christmas season might try to pickpocket. I gotta make sure I have my eyes on this. It's, it's it's so much shit going on. I tell you, it's man, crazy. It, shit. I don't know that it's more violence and like violent crime, but I will say it's more random violent and violent crime. Like I feel like back in the day, it was like more targeted. Yeah, now it's it's like. You never know what's going to happen and where. Like, it, it, yeah, I feel like it was more precursors and, and like, all right, you to stay out of this zone, you kind of good. Now it's exactly. like any, and you could be, be like, you, you, you leave one area and be like, I ain't going to hang out over there no more because they be shooting. And then you go to a church and it gets shot up. You know, it's like you, you just really don't know what's, what, what the next shooter drop is going to be. You know what I mean? So it definitely makes you want to stay more vigilant, man. But uh, definitely something you said made me want to bring back my first topic. The second topic, I'm going to still leave alone. But I, I think that was a good segue into that. So with that being said, man, what's up, guys? Welcome to the partner. Show with three friends separated by distance. Connected by Brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I'm one third of the partners. It's your boy, Tiz, and I'm along with. What's that, a man's face in the place somewhere in this big ass race? But by the end of the show, we'll figure out what we're going to finish at. Indeed, indeed. Um, and as you can see, you know, the, the, the third third of the partners is not with us. Uh, he's feeling a little ill, Pat. Please get well soon. Get um, well soon, brother. Indeed, man. Please, please, please take care of yourself, brother. Um, health is wealth and health first. So get well soon, bro. Hope you feel better if you're hearing this. Um, but um, as we get into the show this week, man, um, 
it's our two year anniversary, first of all. So I, I got a couple of things I want to do here. Oh, I yeah, definitely oh, want to give oh, some shout oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. kind of inspirational to me this year. Um, you know, in the first year I kind of gave shout outs to D.I. the Henneman and Kev on stage as two people that were really like instrumental in kind of showing me the way, like, oh, I can do this. Like this, like the podcast is something that can happen for us. It can be a reality. It doesn't have to be like um, so many barriers to entry on that. And then, you know, my second year I had some channels that I was watching that kind of inspired me in uh, more in the YouTube realm. And uh, this year I'm, I'm kind of rocking out with some, with, with some different content now. So I wanted to shout out those people. Uh, Dr. Nikki Proctor Walden, you know, a friend of the show. But, uh, her and uh, Josephine, they have the, the these like intellect. It's almost like a like a cool person's lecture. Like they they break down different psychological aspects of uh, social interaction online. They uh, did a real dope thing on like uh, yeah. Uh, it, if you're in an intellectual conversation, it's a really dope channel. Go check her out. Uh, mediocre news and poor man's podcast these two are both uh kind of in the manosphere lane but i like the way that they're very objective in how they approach situations um they they kind of avoid some of the more toxic ends of the manosphere and they kind of give a more moderate approach to it where you can if you're not all the way online with a lot of the shit, but but some of the shit does resonate, they're a good channel to check out and like an entryway into understanding why the manuscript really feels the way they do and they articulate it in a way that's really digestible and makes sense. Um Abba and Preach, uh, you know, they they million sub type people, so like they they pretty well known, but they've been getting better with their content. I like the direction that they've kind of been going in with um really leaning more into their comedic side and kind of getting away from um, going back and forth with a lot of creators, um, not letting other creators kind of bait them. I really like that direction. And they're just really good content. Like they, the different types of content that they make from uh, about just social life uh, is really dope. Um, Prim's Hood Cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, if you are like me, um, who like dry wit and just a very like <laughs> real basic sense of humor, like uh, one of them uh, like real straight straight man sense of humor, like troll almost, but not yeah. I guess I don't know what you call it, but it's it's like a real dry yeah, wit, just real yeah. Funny so, and he got a real monotone voice, but he he basically reviews hood movie classics and like <laughs> reviews them but it's hilarious what he does. so check him out uh, and the editing is on point um and then last but not least man rnt edutainment rnt edutainment um but formerly known as dj drama but his, his channel is really dope because it gives you a little bit of everything um uh, he has a really dope sports show um that he does call game on that that shit is on point um i like his perspectives on the different teams and, um, and even though my team is pretty irrelevant in the nfl he has really good takes especially yes, on it that. Yes, it is. that and he got uh he has another show called on the porch like he has different shows for different types of topics so if you're in the the uma sector or something you got topics for that if you're in the sports world you got topics for that if you're in the just you know social conscious and like just building as a community he got a show for that if you went to like just being a troll and looking at beefs and arguing and that type of thing he got a place for that so i like the way he's able to kind of be diverse so rnt edutainment and those are my shout outs for this year as we go into year motherfucking two man <laughs> Oh, 
we just completed it. We're about to start year three. Um, this is like the official podcast that makes it two years that we have been podcasters yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, content creators for TikTok, all that good stuff. Like it's just really amazing the growth uh that we have been able to accomplish in such a short time, especially with the expectation that we have for ourselves coming into this. Uh coming into this, you know, green. Still green as hell to this shit, you know. Still novices, but able to have a thousand people that want to watch and listen to our content. Um, building a community with a real dope base and foundation of uh viewers slash listeners that really kind of accomplish what we want like they they join the conversation they hold us accountable they give us good feedback on how we can get better they celebrate us when we do well like they really are, it really is like a cool little family that we done made here in the pod squad and i ain't crying i got a damn eyelash in my fucking eye but uh i really no dead <laughs> like that shit is irritating the fuck out of me but um um yeah, man, it's just real dope to like think that we looked at this and was like, all right, yo, in the, in the first 10 years, you know, we're going to have a thousand subs. And then, you know, in 20 years, we can get that up to 10,000 subs, you know, and we can make that happen. And then, you know, we'll be on our way and we can make this a long term goal. And, we gonna do, and now we're at a thousand and some change in two years. So, like, it, it's fucking ridiculous. It's crazy. But shout out to us. For the work shout out to the pod squad for sticking with us sub and watching every week um numbers have been really going up for us uh we went i remember we used to have videos it was like in 19 views and we had like maybe 500 subs and now we're getting a steady you know anywhere from 35 all the way up to 200 depending on the video the shorts are going through the roof you know those are hitting a thousand so it's a really dope time for us um, we're looking forward to continue to try to grow. Um, as you can see, you know, we're working on aesthetics, we're working on sound, you know, we're getting clearer visuals. Um, yeah, man, we, we, we're working out here, man. We we got new stuff coming with the store. You know, we got, you know, Pat working. His editing has grown tremendously. You know, like, we we we're, we getting there, y'all. Just keep sticking with us, and we got some for your ass, man. Believe that. Oh, my fault. That sounds crazy. Not for your ass. We just got some for you to watch and listen to, and hopefully it entertains you. The content we create is never mind. Man, fuck you. <laughs> oh shit, man. Uh, yeah, man. How you feel about this? This the, the fact that we've been doing this for two years, bro. Did you think um, we would make it? Like, yeah, thoughts. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I didn't see it going nowhere. Um, ain't like the friendship's going to break up, so that's the only way the podcast going to go somewhere. We took three persistent motherfuckers, so we said we was going to do something. So, hey, we got each other to support each other in the venture and always keep each other on track. So I see us continuously hitting our goals. I just see we need to don't continue to underestimate ourselves because even on the first year, like we set goals that were astronomically far away with numbers that could get there, but that was our reality from those perspectives. I feel that as we grow, our perspective changes, but we still need to be grounded in our same reality. You feel me? Like don't have those big expectations of something coming overnight when we know what work it takes to get certain places. Huh? Yeah. I feel like we're doing good. And I feel like um, those who have been there from the beginning and continue to support us now, I definitely appreciate them. Um, those people who go into the store and purchase items, I definitely appreciate you. Um, especially um, everyone who continues to, yeah, riding, the, definitely riding the, um, Pat for the photo shoot he did with the um, archery stuff on him. Um, to continue to support of the store and trying to make it grow and make the, um, just the store name get out there. Definitely appreciate it. Um, those of you who have been here who continue to comment and try to continue the conversations, as we say, continue the conversation with us. Definitely appreciate that because that's what it's all about. 
continuing the conversation. We started, y'all continue it. Let us keep on going. We love to love to engage. So yes. as we continue to grow, that's not something we're gonna stop. That's something we're trying to do more of as we continue to grow is and get have more engagement. That just makes the show grow, it makes the show more what what the premise of all of it is about. We started a conversation just to bring it to y'all and see what y'all gotta say. So y'all gotta engage to see give y'all perspectives. Facts, man. Facts. Please comment. Like we do engage. You comment on something that come from one of Face's topics, like he will respond and, and like engage in that conversation with you further. You know what I mean? You you talk about something with that pet comment, he'll drop down and, and get right in the chat and, and talk to you about it. Like you say something about one of my topics. I'm gonna have that conversation with you. Like we want to continue this conversation. Like the community of the pod squad is the beautiful part about it is it's a podcast that you are a part of it. It's our conversations that we, again, we're having, man. Like, this started from three brothers just on Zoom, hadn't talked to each other in a long time. It was like, hey, man, let's pull up. It's the pandemic. Everybody was getting into the Zoom thing. Let's talk. Uh, let, let, we ain't got no excuse now. Everybody had to slow down, so let's do it. And from that, we was like, we having these conversations about all these different topics. Let's see if we can have this with the masses. See if some other people out there that think like us or disagree with us that have a different perspective that we ain't thought of that they could bring to the table. But please join our conversation. That is the purpose of it. And yeah, man, like, yeah, man, we're three friends separated by distance, but connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. So join in. And, um, uh, join in. We'll, we'll Conversation being kind of the theme of, of that little moment there. Uh, originally, you know, if you if you were here before the intro, you know, like I, me and me and Face were kind of just discussing things, and uh, I kind of came into the podcast tonight. Uh, I had two topics I wanted to talk about, um, and they were connected. Um, but. Right before the podcast, I kind of got a sign post from God, and I've been really leaning it heavy into like if, if He kind of give me a nudge in a certain direction, I, I take that in, as a shove and, and get the step in that way. Um, so uh, I, I left one of the t- topics off, and then the other topic, I it was connected. You know, what I mean, it was kind of the segue into the second topic. So I, I had cut both of them and kind of came in lost, and then look at God again face in, in in him talking uh we were talking about you know uh you being against violence now and just you know the fact that we need justice we need to stop this these senseless killings of each other we need to stop being the reason that there's less of us here and and, and he even mentioned that you know back in his day you know in, in our day you know we were a lot right that were inflicting violence on people. That was kind of a, a thing that our group was known for. And at the time, you know, through our ignorance, you know, our youth, et cetera, we kind of took pride in that at, at certain points. But, you know, as you grow and you learn, like Faith said, you you change your perspectives and you know more, you know, you're saying you know better, you do better, and you should, as people, you know, grow and, and get better as you get older, not be stagnant. And with that being said, um, there's a conversation that, that I kind of got hip to. It was a dope bill, at least for the part that I was able to catch. And um, they were basically talking about, you know, hypocrisy. And it got me to thinking, like, when does, like, duality or growth become hypocritical? So, like, for me, I'm, I'm multifaceted in how I see things, uh, you know, growing up, I had a very multidimensional life path. I was raised by everything from educators to drug dealers to drug users to alcoholics to, you know, like people who were into very multicultural backgrounds, you know, people from other countries, et cetera. So, like, I have a very all over the place way of looking at things. Um the I, I I like faith face, you know what I'm saying, used to be a person who robbed. I sold illegal items and substances. I fought and hurt people. I would I, I would 
I was good for, you know, using weaponry toward people. But then I was also a teacher for 10 years. I helped kids reach their goals. I give back to charities. I call the police now on suspicious activity in my neighborhood. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm a, hey, oh, hey, they, 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 they done broke my, they done broke our pool stuff. Uh, I don't know where these kids coming from. Come, come get them. They, they, it's a lot of them for no reason. Like, I'm, I'm one of them now. So does that make me a hypocrite? Um, what if those two periods of my life were like within the same year? Does like the quick change of it make you a hypocrite? Like if you go from to like, you know, in February, you was out here giving it up to the streets and then in May, you giving it up to the Lord. Are you now a hypocrite? You know what I mean? Like, like what, what, what do you think about that? And like, what, when do you think it becomes hypocritical? Because I do believe that there are times where people are hypocritical like or myself even have been hypocritical where like i may say one thing and then do something that goes directly against that i think that happens but when does it become like that is who you are like you are a hypocrite as opposed to like those little moments or like that type of thing let's see i think it all depends on like a timeline if you're speaking on the um and the in the realm of okay, I used to do this, but now I do this, and I speak negative. I'm speaking negatively on the past action. That's not you being a hypocrite. That could be you spitting game or giving advice on the downfalls of the path you you took. You feel me? Like I don't see this being a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were still in that limelight, if you were still in that past limelight, and then still talking negatively about it to somebody else in it. Or talking down, or talking negatively about somebody, about somebody who was in the same line. Like then, yeah, you being a very big hypocrite because you're doing the same shit you're talking down about. If you're currently doing the same shit that you're talking down about, I feel like that makes you a hypocrite. Or in the same time realm, you do the same actions but feel no, 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 no guilt or see nothing wrong with your same actions. The preacher but that talks fucking the congregation. Mm -hmm. So you mean like the preacher that talk about cheating all the time in their sermons, but then be fucking the congregation? Yeah, yeah. Remember that's that's a big ass hypocrite because you're you're currently living in that realm. You you you're talking about people doing it, but why you talk about them doing it? That's the lifestyle you live in. You you can't damn somebody for doing the same things you do. You feel me? Like that's the same thing. Like same relationships. You feel me? Say. Your wife does something, and you upset at her with doing by doing this one thing, but the whole time you do the exact same shit, but expect her not to say nothing about it. Mm. That's the hypocritical as the motherfucker. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. So, as far as yeah, I used to do this, but now I'm on the good end, and I've changed my I've changed my actions, and I no longer do that. And I'm just seeing people who do it, and I'm trying to tell them not to, or give them the keys to the path of how to get around it. I see that as different than you still being in it, in in the trenches, and then throwing shade on those in the trenches too. Like you can't throw you can't throw shit if you stepping in it too. You can't throw if you taking a shit shower, you can't talk about everybody else covering and shit. Mm. Now, quick question. With that line of thinking, can you be a person like myself who used to live a certain lifestyle, but now looks down and condemns that lifestyle? Is that does that make me a hypocrite? No, that just means you've attained a certain amount of wisdom that you see saw the, the, the wrongs in your actions. So it, it, it it's not a hypocrite. Because at the point where you did not have the wisdom that you have now, you praised that lifestyle. But now you've grown, matured in a lot of different ways and attained a certain level of knowledge that you look back on the past actions or see the people in the same realm doing that, not even in the same realm, but in that, in that realm doing those things. And you look down on it because you're like, damn, yeah, that shit is stupid. Mm. But in Man, the same instant, I, but in the same instant, but in the same instant, you still look at yourself in those past actions and can still say, "Yeah, I was stupid too." Now you would be a hypocrite if you looked at the people doing it now and said they're stupid, but still praised yourself for doing it when you did it. 
guy. Okay. Okay. I'm following your logic there. So, like, if I'm the old rapper and I, I was like, well, I did this and I, and then the kids shouldn't be doing that, but then you used to be out there toting pistols and shit and beating niggas up in the club, then how you condemning them? Yeah. And, and all you do is, you know, and all you do is brag about your stories that you were doing that. <laughs> yeah. You feel like you can't, you can't be, you can't be the young wise man. man. Can't be the wise man trying to educate the young nigga, but still praising praising yourself about it, doing the shit that the young niggas was doing. It's not sending That's two different messages. You got to follow one message. You feel me? Like if you are gonna try to change the you of the of the wisdom you get of the wisdom you grown to get and know what not to do now, you got to lead them that way. You can't praise the praise the bad way of your past actions because they may they may not take the same good path that you took leading that bad way. They may not make the same mistakes. It's made the same mistakes that led them to le- learn lessons. They could just see the pitfall and fall right in that damn pit. So once you learn your good lessons, share the good lessons. Should keep your bad lessons to your goddamn self. Share what you've learned from the bad lessons. You don't have to praise, oh, yeah, you know, I was out in the club doing this, and then we went around the back, and then the old boy pulled up, and I had a yet. Yeah. No, nah, you ain't got to do all that. Just, tell, just share the wisdom. Right. The wisdom and the experience are two different things. Even like, I, I feel like it gets clouded when people try to talk and share that, because we can share the experience and entice people to a lifestyle, but you can share wisdom and stray them away from the same lifestyle. That's deep. Well, why are you dropping all these wonderful logical gems here? I got another one for you, right? And these are all real scenarios that I personally go through. So I, I like hearing the honest feedback here. So say it's a situation of online, right? Does this make me a hypocrite? We joke on Nubsy, right? <laughs> Right, you remember that video? Mm-hmm. Uh, the the mm-hmm. pop remembers Nubs and she's a classic, right? Mm-hmm. But then I'm in a chat, and this is old as hell. But I'm in a chat, and the the host or whatever is basically making fun of a person that's believed to be in like a not a hospice, but like a assisted living facility. Right Mm -hmm. now, I got my reasons why that probably touched me more personally because of my grandmother, etc. But does that make me a hypocrite? Because I I looked at that as like fucked up, but then I joked on nubs. No, because that's in the realm of sense of humor. Because each person has their limits of sense of humor. Well, it may be funny to one, may not be funny to the next. So, no, that's not hypocritical because what we choose to laugh at. Maybe funny one moment, but then you may learn something. Be like, no, nah, that shit ain't even funny no more. Because there's a lot of jokes that were very funny in the 1950s. But them shits is not funny now. If That's, real. That's real. That's <laughs> real. So, I mean, Let's say some wild hey, shit, baby. If I'm like, it, 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 to the, the realm of hypocritical, the realm of hypocritical, of being hypocritical, is a very, very, I gotta say, very small realm to fit in, but a lot of stuff that people do on a day to day basis that that term gets thrown around like, oh, this hypocritical, that's hypocritical. No, nah, not really. You gotta look at it in a different light. You got just to me, like I, I, I've learned in my own personal life is just a stop and zoom the fuck out. You feel me? And just look at everything from a third party view. Like I'm not even involved in this situation at all. Let me see it from if I was watching this shit. Like if I was watching a movie. So just like we when we, when we was young and we were like, damn, this shit feel like a movie. I treat everything like I treat life like it's a fucking movie and I'm watching this shit. So I decide what goes on. I just decide the actions of my movie. Like I'm writing the script as it happens. You feel me? Mm-hmm. You feel me? So it, it, it helps my interactions. And it helps my thought process too. It, it slows it down because we all know I gotta happen to talking real fast, and people don't understand what the hell I'm saying because I start mumbling. And if you don't know me, you don't know what the fuck I'm saying. But <laughs> just to just to be able to articulate more and gather my thoughts and be able to have people understand quicker what I'm trying to say, that slow down, that zoom out, it gives me a better understanding and give me better foresight and insight of what's going on and, and, and this personal situation. You feel me? So. Just 
Because I used to say the same thing. Damn, was I hypocritical on that? Because I do this and, and I do it. But no, I'm like, no. It's a reason why I don't do that now. And I'm trying to tell why not to do it. Okay, cool. And, but I don't still do it now. Okay. Now, the thing is, those people who don't know that you don't still do that stuff, you feel me? who still see you in the light, in that same realm, then they may say you're hypocritical because they don't know you attain that knowledge of now I can speak this way on that because I saw the pitfalls. I followed this path. I know not to now. You know I mean? mm-hmm. They may not know that because they ain't ready to receive information from anybody else that may have been in their lifestyle. You know I mean? Right. So right. That's, that's right. like um, 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 Nikki Barnes and Frank Lucas. You feel know I me? Mean? Neil one, they're gonna take information, gonna take no good information from the other one. Nick ain't gonna listen to Frank Black, man. We got you got to get out of this game, man. This this ain't the game. Nick, you doing the same thing. Why I'm gonna listen to you? You feel me? That's real. I ain't gonna do what you did. That's a good analogy. So Uh, I don't know. Now this this last one right here, this, this kind of goes with this. I wrote this down or I typed this down, but it was kind of like if it goes there. But I feel like we we just kind of flowing. So now, say you got a person right mm-hmm. that done something in their past that is fucked up, right? Can they then like move past that and become a person that goes against that thing? If depending on what it is, like if it's something super egregious, or like, are there things that can stain you permanently and make you forever a hypocrite if you try to even like, how dare you? Now, me personally, I do think there are some things that you yeah. can do. Yeah, you yeah, rape someone, fair. and I don't mean yeah, like, or like, uh, I don't mean like. You rape someone, as in, like it, it's an it, 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 it falls into that fuzzy area where y'all was consensual, kind of like I mean, like if you, rape them, you straight up rape them. Them. I'm gonna say that you sh- got a fact. Okay, that's at 52. All right, we're gonna edit that part out now. I'm gonna say if you are somebody, right? Mm hmm. Now, I would say that at that point, you kind of that for the rest of your life. Like you, I don't want to hear you come out as no anti-R advocate later with your opinions on how to. Like I'll be honest, a nigga that used to be a robber can tell me how to avoid getting my lockpick. I don't want to hear your advice on R if you if that's what you was doing. You you keep yeah. all that shit. You are. That B and I'm about done with it. That and Pedo. Okay, yup. That yes. Okay, so you you do things is like nope. You just that, and it ain't no coming back. It ain't no you. Yeah, you 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 forever. I don't know if it's a hip. Like I don't know if that's hypocrisy, but I will say it's nigga. You you have no more standing to. That's not hypocrisy. That's standards. That's motherfucking standards because. Even I mean, like, I'm a, I'm kind of old school when it comes to my principles and my moralities. So just as an old school dude who used to do um, illegal activities, it used to be a code. It used to it, it used to be a, a standard and a hierarchy of what was good to do, allowed to do, and what should never be done. And the stuff that should never be done, those people were forever punished. So then it. it to me, at a certain 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 level, that still reigns supreme with me. So I mean, even as I age and gain more knowledge and more knowledge, because every day I, be, I I try to gain wisdom and become wiser. That that still remains the same. That, right. that principle ain't gonna change. <laughs> so that that yeah, that's, that's that, pretty that same. Um, forgive, yeah, for yes, forgive and forget, but some things can't be forgiven and those two things can't be forgiven i'm sorry you know you can forgive violence 
you you can forgive, you can give, forgive violence because it can be situational, subjective. If you get, you feel me, you can forgive that. Um, you 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 you, for, you can forgive robbery because it be situational, subjective. You 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 can forget almost anything and forgive almost anything, except those two things. So now I wouldn't see it as hypocritical for any. I like this. This is the way I see it. Like if you're in prison, right, and and and, and you in there for 120 bodies, but the new person there coming in, he a R word man. He a chronic R word. I see nothing wrong with the first inmate <laughs> having a problem <laughs> with the dude because he's an R word man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. that's on some other type shit. I'm sorry. That, no. that that's just me and my and, and what I got it better than me. Other people may feel that that's harsh or that that's wrong, but that's how I, that's how I feel. They completely taking out whatever type of street justice he feels de deems warranted based on the. <laughs> Uh, I, I believe uh, that I, I can forgive anything, but I can't forget anything. I have a good memory. So I'm always going to forever move according to whatever happened, even if I forgive it. Like, if you've done some really fucked up shit, I'm going to forgive you, but I still need you, that justice to happen. Whatever that justice that matches or is appropriate for whatever you did. I can forgive it. It, but you, it has but to you, happen. You need to get that judgment done to you. Whatever that is, whether that's the day in jail, some community service, uh, a, a severe ass whooping to South Carolina with you. I, I don't know. Whatever that is, but you need to get it, that. It, I will say that like that forever. I'm going to always remember that until that's accomplished. But and this the trip shit. You know, I mean, this may be a hypocritical because even in the time of my illegal things, I still believed in justice. If him, if I was to get caught, hey, shit, I got caught. I got to do my time. It is what it is. I believe in justice. Niggas get caught. Niggas get caught. I was never the hey, free this nigga, free this nigga, just because he my homeboy. No, nah, that I know what you was doing. You know what you were doing. You got caught because you slipped up and made a mistake. Well, now, you got to sit down. Bro. You got to sit down. That's not hypocritical. That's not hypocritical because of the fact that you kept the same energy, quote unquote. Like you were, you were that. Like even though you were doing illegal activities, you didn't fake the funk and act like, well, I'm not supposed to deal with whatever consequences come from these activities. You accepted it all in totality. And I think that that's what makes you not hypocritical. I think the people that are hypocritical are the people who get locked up and then are like, oh my God, I'm treated in humane. Like, nigga, you're in jail. You did something wrong. I'm <laughs> innocent. No. They, it's, this, it's a conspiracy. No, nigga, you killed seven people. You sold 13,000 kilos. You are supposed to be locked up, sir. You got caught. You slipped up. Eat that shit. That's the hip Playing and act like how dare they receive a consequence. No, you fucked up. You went, you went up into that nigga face and talked crazy and then mushed him. Well, it's a it's a wonder that you're just missing your fronts. You could have been missing your life. Uh -huh. Like these. Like actions have reactions, and I think people like when you deal I'll with them. I think you to what I did to you. That's a mature but, way. To, like you should, if you're doing something illegal. Like I think that was the cool part, and what kind of kept all of us from going through anything really crazy is like we did a lot on our own. If we did have to do some really wild shit, when we were with people, it was always with other people that won't go say shit when they got caught. So we were always able to just, hey, y'all figure it out. Oh, you can't figure it out? Well, we going home. And that was that. But I think a lot of that 
still, you know, we accepted whatever it was. Like, if well, I guess I'm going to jail today, y'all. Ain't somebody give me bail. You know, like, it was just standard issue. Mm-hmm. And I think if you more people... You decide to know for and you accept your consequences. That part. And I think that, for me, is... I guess the moral of hypocrisy, like to me, a hypocrite, and this is, you know, since everybody changed words, I'm going to make this my working definition for hypocrite. There's a person that don't stand on what they, what they did. Like if you did it, even if you change your mind later, you did that. So eat that and deal with whatever comes from Keep the same energy. That's all. And, and I think you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, man. Even this, and this, I feel like those people who look down or not even look down or who don't see their actions and grow mm-hmm. are just destined to repeat them. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you don't see your mistakes and see your part in your mistakes, you're going to continue making that same damn mistake. And you're going to keep blaming yeah. everybody else when you keep making that same damn mistake because you don't see or your you. Part. That is not something that was done to you. That is something that you did to you. If I mean, you got to see what you're yeah. doing to you. You 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 do do stuff to yourself. But it ain't always physical stuff. You make dumbass decisions and put yourself in in, in situations where you got to do stupid shit now. Like you didn't have to go to that club that night. You you didn't have to run up on that nigga that stepped on your shoe. You did not. You did not. You you, you did. You you didn't. You didn't. You ain't have to cuss that girl out that that says she ain't want your number. I ain't no time for you. You feel me? You, girl, ladies, you, you ain't got to go try to attack that girl or spill something on her dress because she got the same dress you got on. You ain't got to do all that. You feel me? It's, 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 it's other shit going on, man. See, 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 see the situation you put yourself in. You, you, you go try to spill something on that, that young lady, she tased your ass. Then what? <laughs> Then what? Then you and your homegirls got to go try to fight and all that. Well, you could just be like, oh, well, she got the same dress on me. I guess she got good taste. And continue on about your damn night. So what that nigga stepped on your sneakers? It's a club full of motherfuckers in here. He go, he got to step somewhere. Your feet was right there. Oops. He said, excuse me. Let the shit go. Even if the nigga didn't say, excuse me. Oh, well, fuck it. It's a sneaker, nigga. Sneakers is meant to, they step on the ground. You step in shit with sneakers. You know what, bro? It's huge. I think you stepped it. on your pants or stepped on your shirt. If a nigga step on your pants, that's on purpose. That Then that, I think that, that's not white Or white lives matter. I think we need choices matter. Because that's yes, really bro. what it comes your choices is what matters. What what do you choose? That's, that's a good head right there. Choices matter. Because that's what really is going to determine everything. How are you going to treat the next person, regardless of whatever they are, is going to determine how you are seen, how you are treated by the world, and what other circumstances come your way based off of those decisions. So always be trying to choose the decisions that's going to bring the things that you actually want your way. Because if you don't want to be labeled as something, if you don't want to be a hypocrite, if you don't want to be whatever, then stand on something and stand firm in that and be comfortable with whatever comes with that. Stand tall on whatever your principles are, regardless of what others may say. You'll be respected by not faltering or floundering. Indeed, indeed. And guess what? We stand tall. We have stood tall already for two years now. We are we are toddlers. And now we're coming into the terrible threes and we about to act a donkey all year. We're going to still be hitting y'all with these dope conversations. We're going to still be coming with this YouTube content. I done figured out how to edit a little better, so I'm figuring out my editing <laughs> schedule now. My <laughs> wife helped me uh figure out my scheduling because my time management is horrible, I think. 
Um, like I, I definitely have a fucked up work schedule, so I'd be tired as fuck a lot of times. But on my days off, I kind of like struggle to like know when to pull away from the family stuff and actually take that time. So it's like playing that balance in that. So she gonna help me organize that so I can have time to just like really plug in and have dedicated to just editing. Cause I'm about to get on my uh, I'm, 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 I'm about to get my level up to Pat, um, and then I know I'm doing some shit. So look forward to a better video content coming your way soon, soon, soon. And um, yeah, man, I think that's a good place to leave it, big bro. Like I think I think I, I, I two years, only two thirds of the partners, two. 2,000 subs that we going for in year three. Uh, too many times we done had these conversations for y'all. And now it's time for y'all to join them all, join them all, join them all. Um, as y'all can see, I'm dropping some old footage. Uh, I'm, I'm going to continue to do that throughout the next year. Um, I'm going to get back into the habit of kind of releasing the pod on, on YouTube, too, for my visual people who kind of just want to see it outside of Spotify who may not have that, you know, app or whatever. So uh, I got y'all. Um, but, man, we, yeah, we're going to be doing some things, man. Uh, keep supporting us. Keep liking Please keep liking, comment, and subscribing on YouTube. It, it is helping. It is getting us in the algorithm more. Our videos are actually getting seen a lot more than they were, and that is huge because we felt like we were shadow banned for a long time where we just couldn't get any traction. So please continue to support. If you can't do nothing else, support that way. But if you want to give money, then give some money. Uh, you can get that at uh, going to Cash App and dollar sign partner tears one. That's dollar sign partner tears one. Or you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. You can see the information at the bottom on how you can support financially. Go ahead there. It's handy your business. Um, if you want to support financially, but you also want to receive some goods in return, face. Tell them how they can get the merch. Go to the store. Our store. My stuff, the only stuff where you can get partners podcast merchandise. That's rtreyclothing.com. Once again, it's rtreyclothing.com. A R T R E clothing.com. And no, I'll never spell clothing for you. Won't happen. If you go to the store, on the top banner, you'll see the new promo code. Use it, save some money. Got some new products up there already. Um, yeah. Hat game. Hat game gone. Check out that Tyler's to Zero line. It's coming. Got a few pieces up there now. Looking good. Looking real good. Get your crowns right. Get your crowns right. Tell them that link one more time, face. Artreclothing.com. A-R-T-R-E clothing.com. Check us out, man. AC83 merchandise, Podcast Podcast merchandise, new stuff coming out weekly. Check us out. Yes, follow all the social medias. We on TikTok, we on uh, Twitch, we on uh, Twitter, we on Instagram at the Podners. You can get us on Facebook at Tiz Face Pat or the Podners, and um. We basically, like, we got some new content coming for that soon. I'm telling y'all, this editing shit, I don't know where I found this stuff at, but I don't know where it's been all my life, but I, I done figured out how to do some pretty cool things. And the more I play with this and figure, oh, God damn it. <laughs> the I um understand the technology that I'm using, the better these videos will come out. So uh, I got y'all. Um, <laughs> two for two, two on a two, two on the two years. It, it's the it's the number for the night. Two is just working out that way. I don't know what the hell happening, but you know the universe works in mysterious ways. And God forgive me. Um, but anyway, man, make sure again, man. As I'm gonna reiterate this, it is helping. So if you at all want to support, like, comment, share, subscribe the videos on YouTube, and also if you are already subscribed, do us a favor. Take the time to go to our playlist, pick one of your choosing, 
and just let it rock in the background. Pick two if you pick two short ones. So if you get like, you know, Pat's Corner and, and you know, Burning Early, play both of those back to back real quick. You can put it on mute while you're watching your other stuff, but just do it that solid. We we got the subs, but the watch time hours are lacking, uh, you know, because we make a lot of short form content. So support the long form content. It really does help us tremendously and it's going to get us one step closer to monetization. So keep supporting the pod squad. Keep fucking with us, man. And as always, I have been for the second year in a row, one third of the partners, your boy T. And I'm along with you know, man, Statesman Place, finish the finish this damn race. Oh, of course, we in first place. Thank you for coming. Continue to come chill with us, man. Join our conversations. You could have been anywhere else, but you keep coming to see us. Come on back now. Yeah. It started with what's up, guys? And now it's goodbye, guys. Peace, nigga. One, we up out of here. Bye-bye to year two. Next week, we begin year three. Keep rolling with us, Pod Squad. We love y'all. Peace, motherfucker.